Kendall Lanise. Real, real talk for real people. Let's shine together. With me, Kendall Anise. I will be your host this week and every week. I go by the name of the Remix Coach. I'm a transformational life coach, speaker, author, meditation practitioner, podcaster, talk show host, and most importantly, I am a woman of a certain age. So throughout this show, you will be educated, elevated, and entertained with our various topics and guests on this season of Shine with Kendall Anise. We are now in season eight. Yay! So make sure you do me a favor and subscribe if you can and share this podcast with your friends and family. If you are interested in healing, growth, laughter, being better, wiser, and more fulfilled, then this is a podcast for you. Now on to this week's episode of Shine with Kendall and East. Hey everybody, it is Kendall and East and welcome to this episode of Shine with me, Kendall Anise. I'm not sure how you stumbled upon this podcast, but I'm so glad you did. If you are a first-time listener, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you can rate this podcast or subscribe, please do so now. To all my loyal listeners, thank you for coming back every single week to be educated, elevated, and entertained. This week, you're going to be educated for sure. Some of you will be re-educated and some of you will be triggered. We're talking about narcissists. Now, that is a buzzword all over social media and everywhere. Everyone is understanding or thinking they understand or talking about narcissists. So all the time people are like, well, what is a narcissist exactly? Am I a narcissist? What is narcissistic behavior? We're going to talk about all of that today. If you go back a couple of weeks, I spoke about psychological abuse and I talked about gaslighting in particularly. And I said, I am going to do a show on narcissists because everyone asked me to, everyone was talking about it. So I said, okay, I'm not going to do this episode alone. I'm going to have an expert on talking about this. So you'll hear from my guests shortly. But let me start, of course, with this week's Life Note. All right, it's time for this week's Life Note. All right, so if you're just tuning in for the first time and you're wondering what a Life Note is, it's a quote or a saying to get you through this topic and something to keep with you probably forever, especially since we're talking about narcissists. So this week's Life Note is, I'm not sure who is the who the author is, but people have a habit of inventing fictions they will believe wholeheartedly in order to ignore the truth they cannot accept. That's this week's Life Note. All right, without further ado, I want to invite and welcome my guest, Jay Houston, PhD. He is an author, a podcaster, and an expert on this topic. Jay, welcome to Shine with Kendall and East. Kendall and East, thank you so much for having me on your show today. So excited to be here. My pleasure. All right, so this is a topic that you know all too well, and and so do I. Why are you an expert on this subject? You know, it's a subject, uh, one of my most favorite subjects with one of my least favorite people. I've actually experienced this personally myself. And I want to say, even though I have a PhD, it is not whatsoever in psychology or sociology, and that's the point. Narcissists do such a great job of being stealth and fooling us all that no matter how smart or educated you think you are, you can walk straight into the path of a narcissist and have no idea what's going on, sadly, sometimes until it's over. I agree, and that was my experience. And I would like to think that I'm completely educated because I am. I'm very enlightened. (laughs) (laughs) I'm very enlightened. I'm very aware. Uh, But narcissists are smooth like that so they think and you don't even know that you're being narcissized that's a word i just made up but (laughs) (laughs) i like that word (laughs) you are being narcissized so when you think about a narcissist what are first explain to the people what a narcissist is and what is a narcissist's main goal when they're encountering someone You know, I think you said something in your introduction that was key in terms of of people use this phrase all the time. And I think people use the phrase all the time. They mean somebody's self-centered. 
standard, which the narcissist is, or somebody who needs attention all the time, which is also true about narcissism. But I think, number one, some of their goals are to create emotional chaos uh, within anybody who attempts to hold them accountable, and then to gain and always keep attention. Narcissists are emotional vampires. Mm. They feed off your emotions, whether it's positive or negative. Mm. So because they're such manipulators, Mm. That's the difference between somebody who's just plain self-centered, somebody who just needs attention, mm. uh, or somebody who's just completely focused on their agenda. You know, we all run into self-centered people, but mostly those self-centered people aren't out to emotionally manipulate everybody around them. They just like attention, and that's a key differentiator. Whoo! You probably will hear me say "mm" this whole <laughs> this whole <laughs> podcast because every time you hit those sweet sore <laughs> spots, I would be like, "oh." So I'm telling you right now, listeners, you'll hear me concur a lot. And you can't see me shaking my head, but just know that I am. (laughs) So you talked about emotional manipulation. That's, whoo, child, that's that's some deep stuff. What do you mean? Let's break that down into bite-sized pieces. Uh, Emotionally manipulative. What is that? Okay, perfect. Great question, great question. So... Let's say you are holding, you're trying to hold somebody accountable for their actions. And most people, you know, a lot of people don't like to be called out on whatever they did wrong or said wrong or emailed you wrong or whatever, but some people can wiggle and squirm and they can still be held accountable for their actions. A key point about narcissists, they can never be held accountable for their actions. But because they like to emotionally manipulate, the more you get upset at them, the more they use your energy Woo! against you. I mean, they use your, they take, uh, there's another one of those screens, they take your kinetic energy and use that for dynamic energy to manipulate Ooh. you. So the madder you get at them, the more upset you get at them, the more you produce documents, yeah. emails, uh, uh, credit card receipts yeah. about whatever they did that you're accusing them of, you're like, you must be tripping. Yeah. So if Ooh. you're trying to hold a narcissist accountable, if they directly are talking to you, they can gaslight you and say that this didn't happen. Mm -hmm. If there's an audience of other people around, then they Mm -hmm. can triangulate you. That's a word that I wasn't familiar with until I did the research. Triangulation is a word where they use, again, your energy. Mm -hmm. You're the one getting upset. Mm -hmm. They calm down. They Mm -hmm. pipe all the way down. (laughs) They tell your friends, your friends, that you don't want this crazy. Isn't that something? crazy. Mm-hmm. And that is actually the experience that I went through. After so many times of trying to hold a narcissist accountable, I lost a friend, a really good friend, who believed in narcissists that I was actually the crazy one. And all I was trying to do was hold them accountable. Triangulation is I the word I was not, a, a, not mm-hmm. familiar with at all. Yeah. Your podcast last week on gaslighting, awesome. That Thank happens you. when you're talking to a narcissist one-on-one. They gaslight you to make it seem like you're doing, that you are at fault for holding them accountable. Is that, um, does that make sense? It, it makes a whole lot of sense because I've experienced a narcissist firsthand um, and everything yeah. that you're saying is hitting all the spots is so true. And they'll transfer uh, their energy on to you and they'll make you think yeah. like, like, wait a minute, I know you got a nose on your face. And they're like, I don't have a nose on my face. What's wrong with you? This is not even a nose. This is a... a, Right. You're talking about noses? Right. What's wrong with you? Do you think that you have a nose problem? Right. They absolutely will flip it. Yeah, they will flip it like, what do you mean? And now let's talk about your nose. And then they'll get on that. Mm -hmm. And then you're in next thing you know, you're engaged in something that you didn't even accept the invitation to. That's the trickery. (laughs) That's correct. (laughs) Trickery of that. Um, it's so interesting. And when you, and talk- you hit on something, even when you said that you've experienced it and I've experienced it. Oh, for it. sure. I think that the number one trait that all narcissists have is that they're all operating out of the same playbook. And people who've experienced it pretty much have had the same experiences, even if they haven't, it wasn't the same person. It could be an old person, young yep. person, black, yep. white, Chinese, yep. rich, poor. They all operate the same way. And that is their number one defining characteristic. The people who have experienced it have the same stories and they make the same sounds that you just did. Woo! Yep. Wow! And we all can get triggered yep. the same way. Yeah. Even though we're dealing with completely different people. Yep, so true. Now, let me ask you this. So do you think yeah. narcissists know that they're narcissists or do you think they're just used to that behavior? And then when someone brings it up and say, hey, you're a narcissist, they're like, you're tripping, you're bugging. 
They can care less about the label. They have heard it before. A lot of narcissists have heard that maybe as late teens, early 20s, they start to heard that. They can care less. If you're using it to hold them accountable, the term that is, if you're using that term to hold them accountable, they'll just, again, flip your energy and take that to be able to go against you. Um, they are uncurable. There are so many psychologists and social workers who will refuse to work with them if that person hasn't been identified or even thought of as a narcissist because they can't be made to see themselves. So you can't hold them accountable. You can't get them to see themselves, no matter how much you try or a professional tries. So the term narcissist means nothing to them unless you think it means something and then they want to use that energy that you have against you. You think it means something? So they'll use it against you. So it's a narcissist also blames other people. It's everybody else's fault, but their own. If that person didn't do this, if that person didn't do that, if you didn't do this. And I love what you said is they'll lower their tone. So now after they've, after they've cut you off, after they don't allow you to speak, after they twist your words to make them their own and someone's natural voice elevates, because they're trying to be heard and not being cut off, then they'll quiet back down and yes. say, look at you. What is going on with you? Yes. Here's here's the famous one. Yes. I know you've heard it. Are you okay? Right. And you talked about that earlier. Talk about that yeah, some more, how I mean, they, they, like you they're, said, they're they try to get you. To create emotional yep. chaos within mm -hmm. your head to question as to whether or not you've heard this correctly. And yep. I'm going to say this. They don't always have an agenda that is concrete. They enjoy it. It is a game to them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they are trying to hide their misgoings, misdeeming, mm -hmm. their misgoings, the things that they've done, things that you're accusing them of. But they don't need a reason that's concrete. They mm -hmm. love to mess with people just mm -hmm. as is. It is a complete game to them. Mm -hmm. The chaos in their heads, which they have, they, they hate themselves, not just hate themselves. They would like to be able to pass on to you. So that you question yourself, the victimhood that they have within mm -hmm. themselves, they are always the victim mm -hmm. of anything. That victimhood mm -hmm. they would love to pass along to you mm -hmm. so that you feel that way of their misdoings, misgivings. They yeah. love for you to see yourself as a victim. Yeah. And unfortunately for a lot of people who have been doing narcissistic abuse, that's what we unfortunately sometimes take forward with us into the future. It's like after we're done with them, we still feel victims of their abuse and they love that. They want to be able to occupy rent-free housing in your head. Come on. It's so true. But the thing is, that's why you have to remove yourself completely from narcissists because that can affect your mental health. That can affect the way that you feel and view things. That could affect a lot of different things. And people don't understand that. When you're dealing with a narcissist, you know, nothing is provable. And when I say that, and you can definitely, if something is concrete in your face, you're saying, um, why did you do that? And you have all the proof. That's the definition of it with gaslighting as well. You have all the proof. You're saying you didn't do this. Here's the proof saying it. Oh, well, that person got it wrong. Or you don't know what you're reading. Or can you read? Or, you know, they'll totally trick you into the point where you're questioning yes your own reality that you can see right in front of your face. Absolutely. Um, and, and everything you said is, is so true, but it's so hard to understand that when we don't grow up thinking about narcissism. Mm -mm. I never learned about narcissism as a teenager or in my 20s. I could identify all kinds of people in my past mm -hmm. now, whether they were co-workers, family mm -hmm. members, friends of friends that were that way. But when you're in it, mm -hmm. it is just a mind job that you mm -hmm. don't understand what's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. And these terms come to you later, triangulation, mm -hmm. gaslighting, narcissism, mm -hmm. in general, afterwards. Kendall, I think it's the hardest thing to identify yeah. when you're actually with that person. What is a narcissist? And then, as you say, to be able to leave that person. Sure, as soon as we get that term down, we're, we're out of there. Yeah. But it's really hard while you're in that relationship, in that friendship. Or well, sadly, when you're dealing with that from a parent, when you've been yes, that's by a deep. Yep. that's the hardest, yep. hardest one yep. to be able to let go. I'm glad that you brought that up because a lot of people think yeah. you're only experiencing, experiencing narcissists in relationships. But you can be raised by a narcissist in romantic relationships. You, right, that's the common one. But you can be raised by a narcissist. You can have a narcissistic boss. You can have narcissist 
friends, friends who are narcissists. Yes. There's so many different people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you get caught up with one, you'll look like you just said and look at the pattern of your life and say, well, hey, there's quite a few in my life. But it's so interesting right. that I've talked about it for forever and never... I never saw one up close until a few years ago. And right. being experiencing that up close, and I remember this person was like, why do you always use gaslighting? I said, because, or narcissist, narcissism, I said, because I've never seen it up close. Like, I never right. saw someone do it. And at first, you're thinking, you're not thinking that it's a narcissist or a gaslighter. Then you start learning more, seeing more, and certain things, you're like, wow, this is gaslighting. <laughs> so let's talk about how they get to us uh, to trust or yeah. mirror or love bombing. Because love bombing. Where going. We talk about what to do afterwards. We talk about how to identify when you're in it. Right. How does it even get started? Yeah. I think that narcissists up front absolutely seek out empathic people. They mm. absolutely seek out people with high levels of integrity mm. because people who are empathic and people with high levels of integrity can't see who they are. We can't imagine that somebody could be so dastardly or play the mind game. So they're attracted to us in terms of, in terms of are you okay? I'm sorry. I'm, I can't take it. Look, Come I can't take it. Yourself. Come on back to us. <laughs> I can't take it. Uh, I'm no longer. Attracted to them, I mean, as a coworker, as a friend, yeah. as a yeah. family member, yeah. not just in romantic relationships, yeah. but we'll focus on that in the first place. We'll yeah. focus on that primarily. Yeah. Love bonding, mm. something that narcissists do when they're first meeting you. They are really, really attached to you really quickly. And they brag about to you and to others how close we are, how tight we are. We're amazingly tight. We're best friends or we're best brothers or best love interests. That is a red flag. Somebody who bonds with you so quickly, so deeply, um, and then mirrors you. Mirroring is the one thing they do. They they learn you faster than you learn you. They learn what you like, what you don't like. Everything to be able to then use against you, to be able to get you to love them. So then they can turn up the heat on psychological manipulation. Wow, wow, so wow. No bonding happens right off the bat. You got integrity, you can't see this coming. You got charisma, you wow. got em em empathy, you can't see them coming. Wow. They're awesome in the beginning. Wow. So let's, whoo, child. Mm, mm, mm. So let's yeah. talk, let's talk about, <laughs> I'm about to jump out my seat and throw this, this whole device. Stacey, okay. Stacey, put your seatbelt on. <laughs> so because this is resonating, of course, with me and you, we've experienced, but I know so many people out there. So let's talk about it because yeah. I want to really separate it because you talk about love bombing, but there are people actually yeah. out there who can fall in love quickly who can um, bond close, who can tell everything that you said that can happen, and those people aren't narcissists. So how do you, right. how are you able to tell the difference? If someone is out there dating right now, and they might be dating someone mm -hmm. and they're falling quickly, they're loving the person already, they're learning the person already, and it could be just the natural, good old-fashioned Love and Absolutely. and and, and growing in love. Don't want to ruin and we love moments exactly you know, when you're meeting somebody. Exactly. We don't, we don't want people thinking, "Are you a narcissist?" Exactly. Really well. Exactly. You know? So tell the difference, and that's one of the first indicators. One of the first indicators that you can use if you you know want to be having a conversation with this person that you're really infatuated with and really having a good time with is just politely ask them about their exes. Narcissists can't help but trash Woo! anybody who they've ever dealt with as the worst person ever. They were the, the last person was just a drug addict, or they were in jail, or they were the worst. Now, the what if the person? Worst. Now, wait a minute. Now, now what if? Seen as the greatest person that they've ever dated. Oh, a big thing early. So, what about if? the last person that you were with were, were they were all those addict, things right? like what if they were really a drug addict or really if they were a liar right, or a right, narcissist right, right, so right. that's well, why I really want to a pattern. And, and of right course, if you're 17, I just they don't have a pattern if you're 27 they get a little bit of a pattern right but the older the, the older that the person is you're dating the more of a dating history they would have and so right. I just don't want people to be so petrified 
to date out there that they're thinking that because the last person could be that. But I think the differences and the clarification that we need to talk about is that person could be a drug addict or this or what all the things that you named the last person. But I think the really harp is on is how great I was. Like if they're saying in a relationship, the past relationship, if it was the other person that did all of this horrible stuff and they're like, I was just a complete angel. I didn't do, and then they go to the last person, the next person they were with. That person did this. Then the next person, that person, and, and, they, and, were, and they were innocent. They were right, the victim, nar- exactly, exactly the victim. Of uh, if it's not a narcissist, anyone can take ownership in knowing that it 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 was them or take blame. I don't want to say blame, but they're not wasting time, like you said. For every person they were with, it was somebody else's fault. Right. Right. Um, so it's really still going to be difficult in those early few da- uh, weeks and months of dating to be able to differentiate people, mm-hmm. whether they're narcissists or not. But if you take your time, you can see some of the patterns that develop, mm-hmm. always being a victim, mm-hmm. uh, blaming other people, mm-hmm. and then the personal responsibility they'll show towards their job, towards their coworker, towards their other friends. Mm-hmm. You'll dig into some of that the more you talk to the person that you're dating in those early stages. But it's possible to really see them coming right off the bat. I mean, just like it's possible to see, you know, bad dates in general right off the bat. So how is it possible to see them right away? Teach the children. Teach everyone out there. How is it possible? Uh, be- <laughs> because we don't there's want no to... There's no black light you can put on. There's no black light that you could be able to see. <laughs> no black light. light. There's no first date <laughs> knock, knock, knock away spray. It's dark away spray. Maybe we should come up with that. Maybe we should invent that. But um, it's interesting because, you know, people are out there dating and we definitely don't want to scare you, but we want you to be aware. We don't want narcissism to just be a buzzword. We're doing this so you can be aware because it really is psychological abuse. And I want people to have healthy whole relationships And how you do that is by getting to know someone, talking to someone, and see what they talk about. Because if they're always talking about, you know, somebody else did this and they're always the victim or they never take ownership of anything, even if that's not a narcissist, you don't want someone who doesn't take ownership or doesn't have self-accountability. That's like, period. You don't want that in a relationship. You want someone who can see their wrongs as well, who can have a conversation on growth and healing. I tell people all the time, if you're dating and the person you dated never did some self-work, never had coaching, therapy, counseling, never took the time to really get to know themselves and to work on themselves, run the other way because you have to have somebody that's accountable for themselves, for them, their selves. That is a great point. And maybe the knock away spray is just that. <laughs> the idea of therapy is something a narcissist is not going to ever want. Mm-hmm. They are never going to be accountable for their actions. Mm-hmm. And you can use that as a spray if you come up with some way to bring that up in the early stages of the day. Hey, have you ever had therapy? But you can't just jump right into it. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Get into that. Ain't you can wrong tell with people, me. also borderline personality disorders, you can tell if they're not interested in working on themselves. Now, People who were raised by narcissists, whether their mother was a narcissist or their father was a narcissist, is it more likely for them to see a narcissist in relationships as the love of their lives? Because they're used to being narcissized? (laughs) Right. Unfortunately, some of the research that I've seen has, has shown that people who were raised by narcissists truly struggle to trust others and trust love and trust functional relationships as because they see themselves as less worthy they were abused so much Mm. psychologically being raised that it is really difficult without a ton of counseling to be trusting going forward I, I, i know a young lady who i was reading about who was um, abused so much, again, psychological abuse by her father that she still sort of sleeps with the door uh, fully closed and the blankets pulled over her head and it's really hard for her to trust wow. anybody wow. within two years of meeting. We talked about those early stages wow. of dating. So wow. difficult. Wow. But that's interesting yeah. because um, 
I don't think some parents know that they're narcissists. I honestly don't. I don't right. think that narcissists really know. That's why it's important to really have conversations and talk while you're dating. Like have conversations, real conversations to talk about certain things so you can kind of, they can see who you are on the inside and who they, or you can see who they are on the inside. Like you said, if somebody is like, they're not going to kiss nobody, they're not going to be intimate. And I don't mean sexually intimate. I mean, intimate conversation, yeah. you know, they don't want to, yeah. to, that's how you can tell something like that. There's still some PTSD there, right? Yes. Yes. You know, as we continue to work on what exactly would be the knockaway spray, what would be the indicators in the early stages of dating that can alert you? I think that talking about integrity, talking about self improvement, mm -hmm. talking about character, however you can bring that up in the conversation, a narcissist is not going to want to go into a conversation about integrity. They know they, know they don't have it. They're not going to want to go into empathy. They know they don't mm. have it. And they're not going to be talking about any counseling or self work. Mm -hmm. They're never going to go there. Mm -hmm. So, Shying away from those conversations, as you said before, may not just be for narcissists, but shying away from those conversations, somebody who does that in the early stages of dating is somebody you want to be able to avoid. And that might be the knock away spray. Yeah, and also we if they're that, over, we we that? really we need to come up with something. We need we you we need to do something. <laughs> because you know, you have I, I'm glad that you're you're saying all this and we're definitely um We'll probably have a part two to this, but um, okay. I don't think, let me say this. If you are around somebody and they don't, you don't see, you hear about friends, you may, or they don't have friends or they say, I don't get close to anybody or I don't, you know, mm. want a friend or all of that. That's an indicator too, that maybe other people have wiped their hands of them, them. Or maybe they can't stand to be around them because, like Maya Angelou says, you might not remember what they did, but you remember how they made you feel. And they Absolutely. might not be able Absolutely. to put it into to words, but they know if I'm around this person or that person. Because I'm thinking of people, not even romantically, where it's just like, ooh, do you even want to be around them? You know, everybody says the same thing about the person. Like they don't, I don't like any adult, whether a narcissist or not, that doesn't accept responsibility for their actions. They're not accountable right. to themselves or to anyone. Um, it's everybody else's fault. And when I can look at certain things right. and certain people that were narcissists, I'm like, dang, how did I not see that they blamed everybody else for everything, whether it was the mother, sister, aunt, cousin, ex-husband, ex-wife, you know, the sister, baby, mother, baby. I, how do you blame everybody else? And there's nothing that you can say that you're accountable for. And you say narcissists can't change. Like, narcissists are and, unchangeable. That and is I a hate to hear that. Characteristic. When I'm for growth and, you know, as a life coach, wanting to, to help people be better, you know, and to hear that, it's sad. Why can they, why do they say the same? Why don't they change? They can't be made to see themselves. Professional counselors, for the most part, do not touch them whatsoever. They can't come into a, a, a therapist's office, a I've counselor's office, a life coach's office, and be made to see themselves to work on it. Plus, they have no desire to work on themselves. Yeah, yeah. Their lies aren't in their expert liars they're not just lying to the rest of us they lie to themselves about who they are yeah i saw you know i love red table talk that's the kind of work that i love like i would love to have a show on that kind of platform red table talk and i remember an expert was on there and they were talking about narcissists and they had um role plays they had a reenactment of some different situations where you can see the narcissist and I was watching it like, yeah. oh, my goodness, I've encountered yeah. those people <laughs> like where they uh -huh. don't see anything. And I, that that right there drives me insane where because I'm the type mm -hmm. of person I take ownership of anything. 
I will apologize. Yeah. I will recognize. Yeah. I will go into myself, do the yeah. self work, be like, dang, I didn't have yeah. to say that like that. Maybe I could have done that. Maybe this way. And let me improve as I grow through through life. Even at age 51, I, I'm still go, growing through. And I've taken the time over years to really know myself and look. But then you have narcissists that have been having the same behavior traits forever and they're not willing right. to change. Is it that they're not willing to change not because all. they don't they're see not it? Is it because they don't want to change or because they really, this is really their makeup and they don't see it? It's really their makeup and they don't see it. They are incapable of wow. seeing themselves. Wow. And all of those wonderful attributes that you just described for yourself can be used against you. Because oh, you'll they have. It's projected other oh, people they have. are as good hearted as you are. They have. Yes, I have been taken advantage of that way emotionally because I am that way. Because I will own anything. I will apologize. I will... You know, yeah. have sensitivity. I will have empathy, like oh. you said. And those that makes you traits, an easy target. And that's terrible, right? And I didn't know that. It really does. Now, I'm no saint. I'm not perfect. I'm never, you know, no one is. Sure. We're all still, you know, striving. Hopefully, everyone is striving to, to be better. But when I came across one, I was like, oh, I've never seen this before. And I think I'm out of my league with this because... I just can't believe people act this way. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned how you didn't see it coming. But mm -mm. That's the hard part. You're like, why didn't I see mm -hmm. this? And you put it all together. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's the common story about mm. narcissism is that you put it all together. We put it all together mm -hmm. after the damage is done, after the mm -hmm. relationship is over. And we look back at it and then blame ourselves. It's the hardest thing to be able no, to No, I did it. I did it while I, I did it. You feel like a victim. I did it. I was putting those pieces together while I was in a relationship. That, and that's why I'm not in that relationship. <laughs> I was putting those pieces together. You know, you have to, um, you have to be able to do that and see and really see people and how they operate and not the, the key to with a narcissist is not seeing how they just operate with you, seeing how they operate with other people their family members, their friends, their and strangers, just watching to see how they do. Because a narcissist Absolutely. is not just going to be a narcissist to one person. They're going to be a narcissist to everybody that they encounter. And it's this facade that they are not doing it because they might doing it with a soft voice or a smile right. or um, right. a profession or something. So then it's like, oh, that person is a nice person. What happened? Because now that person is not getting what they needed to get, or maybe you're not giving them what they needed. So now you can really see their colors. And, and again, this is not just in dating. This is friendship. This yeah. is um, yeah. uh, supervision and jobs. And these are parents as yeah. well. They are completely consumed with their own image. So it doesn't matter how much they can be torturing people. As long as they're perceived as being great people, then that's what they want. Yeah. Um, so they are complete chameleons. Um, and, and as we said at the top, <laughs> there's still some of the things that we think about narcissists when we think about being self-centered and always needed attention. Yeah, those are correct. It's just their depravity goes much deeper than just needing attention. Yeah. And I want to, so um, everybody listening, this is part one. We're going to have Jay back uh, next week yeah. also, and we're going to give um, examples. We're going to give different, uh, I don't want to say technique, <laughs> the Narcon, to see, you know, what you yeah. can do to avoid them. But uh, before we end, Jay, I wanted to, um, if you don't mind sharing some of your story with a narcissist, just so people understand that, you know, this has happened to you. You talked about that earlier. And then also, um, it happens to the best of us. And then that led you to start doing your research, research on narcissism. But can you uh, quickly talk about your experience with narcissists and have you had multiple just one, just one. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I don't think we can have another go round with that. I know, I, I just have one too. To but mm -hmm. absolutely, I can wrap that up quickly. And I want to say, narcissists don't have friends. 
Narcissists may not necessarily have deep romantic relationships. My encounter with a narcissist, as we said, it happens in all aspects of their lives, was with a friend. Mm -hmm. And for 20 years, I was an enabler as a friend. I looked the other way while this friend did all kinds of things, as you said again, in the rest of their lives, family life, jobs, got into all kinds of trouble, whatever. I was an enabler. As soon as I started to turn and say, hey, this isn't somebody I want to be able to deal with as a friend, that's when... The meetings with other friends started to get together and me having all kinds of emails, documents, things uh, with me to be able to say, hey, this guy's done that. I brought with me to these meetings with friends. But Ken Delgan, let me you know what else I brought to those meetings. What? I brought my emotions. Mm. And that's what was able to be manipulated. Mm. Narcissists can manipulate again. Yeah. The kinetic energy you share to be able to, to hold them accountable is exactly what they use against you. Yeah. And so in those meetings with those friends, this guy who I'm now trying to hold accountable and say, this is why I don't want to be friends with him anymore. As I started to elevate and add more conversation, more emotions to yeah. it. You know what the rest of my friends heard? They didn't hear the facts. They didn't hear the figures. They didn't see the emails. All they heard was my emotion. Mm -hmm. What I didn't know mm -hmm. was this guy had been prepping them to be like, hey, I think Jay's a little off. Mm. I think he's a little bit, you know, not all the way there. His emotions are all over the place. And that's exactly what happened. As I, my emotions went up, at a few meetings that we were having to be able to discuss what was wrong with our friendship. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this dude is cutting up completely. Yeah. Do that against me. Fun cut me off. Yeah. That's it. I started doing research because I, Kendall, I had no idea what happened. Yeah. I had no idea how the person. That's how it happens. It's side swiping. Numbers, stalking me, doing other, all kinds of crazy stuff, again, to get my emotions up. The minute I tried to cut him off, he was just like, I told you he's crazy. And this was just a male off. friend. What? This was a male friend. Correct. Correct. Calling Correct. Mm -hmm. Who absolutely showed narcissistic, looking back, yeah. absolutely showed narcissistic, narcissistic behavior throughout all of his life. You said that so well when it has no boundaries to just romantic relationships. Yeah. It shows up in the workplace. Yeah, it does. It shows up with family. It does. Right. When I look back right. and I can think about, okay, yeah, I had uh, one romantic relationship with a narcissist, but then I think about family members. I think about a former boss. You can see, and every narcissist is not, even though they are, they have similar traits. Their uh, mode of operation is not the same. Um, and I think well, their social setting is the same. They do operate on the same pla platform, but their social settings make them have to go in different directions. When Got they're it. Mom or coworker. Or Got friend. it. Got it. Got it. And it's so interesting yeah. because I honestly believe that the people who are narcissists, they don't even know that they're narcissists. They just think no, that that's no part idea. of their personality and when I was watching even Red Table Talk and my personal experiences with um, narcissists now that I really sit and think about it um, some of those the scenarios that played out I was like wow because and I, and I, I this is just my personal opinion because as, as a life coach I always speak about boundaries I did a show here talking about boundaries and yeah. you have to set boundaries with narcissists and remove yourself you from those situations. Why do you think some people don't recognize the narcissism um, and that are being narcissized? <laughs> and why do you think it's difficult for many people to remove themselves and disconnect? It's difficult because we project our best side of ourselves onto them for years, even though I knew this guy was cutting up, I still, I, they have charm, they have charisma, and I still projected that, oh, they're still a good person, we still have a good friendship, even though I know they're cutting up all yeah. the time. That's what makes all of us potential enablers, if That's you have integrity true. or empathy. That's true. Enablers are, narcissists need enablers, they're not friends, they're always manipulating and doing things that they want. But if you want to look the other way, which I'm guilty of doing. And giving the benefit good. and giving the benefit of the doubt. Hmm? And giving the benefit of the doubt to people. Benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You can't picture how deviant they are. So you give them the benefit of the doubt. We just what, until you experience it sometimes or hear about it on a podcast with Kendall Denise, <laughs> it's really hard to picture how deviant they can be. Mm-hmm. 
It's interesting. It it really is. And yeah. again, um, this podcast is to educate and Jay and I are sharing, yeah. sharing our experiences, not because, you know, it's not always easy to share your experiences because you don't want instill. This is, goes back to the empathy. You don't want to feel like you're throwing someone under the bus. You don't want, to, you know, that. So that's, that's exactly right. That they goes back that to, right. To under the bus, but we're worried about throwing them under Honey, the bus. Honey, let me tell you, they throw you under the bus and run you over and then go, go around the corner and run oh, you absolutely. over again. And you're still having empathy. And that's where you're right. a mark, a target. You know, so I don't want 100%. anyone. Yeah, thank you. I don't want anyone to change who they are. If you're empathetic, if you're loving, if you give people the benefit of the doubt, all of that. I don't want you to change who you are. I just want you to change who you give it to and who you show it to. Because if you're in a romantic relationship, that person that's for you needs to get all of the softness and the gushiness and all of that. But you just have to make sure that they're giving it in return and then you feel good when you're around them and you don't feel like something is wrong with you, something is off, what's happening because that's psychological abuse and that's a good way to tell if you're in a healthy relationship, relationship meaning your parents, your friends or romantic relationship, all of them need to be healthy. If you walk away from those relationships feeling worse about you and who you are, that's those aren't the people that you need to be around. Am I right, Jay? That is one hundred percent correct. Yeah. So I, I think Yeah, so I just think it's important as we as we conclude part one, are you willing to come back for part two? Uh, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> <Absolutely>. So <laughs> what last, what would you tell someone who is unsure or how would you give advice to someone who may be, let's go romantic because that's what we're hearing more and more yeah. about it. When we look at TikTok, when we Absolutely. see Red Table Talk, people focus on the romantic. So let's take a moment to all the people out there dating or who are in a relationship, possibly with a narcissist. What is, what are three, maybe three things that uh, you want to bring to their attention just to see if they are? And also, how can they remove themselves from, from the situation or the people? Well, removing yourself is going to be a contingent upon how deep you are in the relationship. I mean, mm-hmm. if you're already married to this person, that's a different level than just being your boyfriend, girlfriend, or that's a different level than somebody you're just going out with. So removing yourself is going to be difficult have a higher degree of difficulty depending on how deep you are in a relationship. Mm-hmm. But I want to give you two things to be able to look out for as we conclude this particular podcast on narcissism. One, when you hold somebody accountable, do you end up feeling bad about it? Again, mm. your attempt to hold a narcissist accountable is met with a counterattack. Mm. Either they tone down and make you look crazy and make you think you're crazy, or they can speed it up and counterattack and fire back at things that they heard about you. It's, it's not just that they'll always tone it down. Whatever it is, when you hold them accountable, do you feel worse when you hold them accountable? Do you even feel hesitant to hold them accountable? That's number one. Their accountability is never going to happen. They're always going to make you feel worse about it. That's one. Number two is one we didn't get a chance to talk about that narcissists love to be able to do. And I call it being on information island. Narcissists want to be your only source of information on what else goes on. What else goes on in this relationship? What else goes on in the world? Um, if you're married to one, they, narcissistic men tend to sometimes have stay-at-home wives, not just so they can control the finances of the house, because what they want is control of everything, but just so they can control all the rest of the information. The, 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 the less amount of people you talk to, the more that they can control you. So information island they want to say hey believe me i'm the only one that matters i got all the sorts of information they are big into don't talk to other people about our relationship don't talk to other people Mm -hmm. about uh, me as much as they Mm -hmm. love attention they still need to be your only source of information so they're never going to be like hey we should talk to such and such about this or go see counseling um they're always going to want to keep you on an information island Mm. so that they control that flow that's deep. That's the, those are the two things that I think we didn't get a chance to really talk about. We talked about the accountability, but that information island is huge. So we have um, a part two coming. And there are other things we can get into um, in part two. Woo, let's get in part two. Let's get into the pettiness. 
because that yeah, that that's a <laughs> and it's another level of it's another level of pettiness. So next week, so we're yeah. gonna talk. So next week on part two, we're gonna talk about pettiness. What else are we gonna talk about? What did you say? Um, just a middle school mentality. That's what I call that pettiness. And we'll get into some of the details of what gaslighting, uh, triangulation mm -hmm. uh, looks like a little bit, and just you know what are their true motivations at all times. Um, Absolutely. Some stories, unfortunately, about the things that we've been through and heard about. Yes. All right, guys. So I hope this helped everyone. Uh, let's give it up for Jay Houston, PhD, podcaster, author, and expert on narcissism. Hey, Jay. Thank, thank you. you so much for having me. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. So, guys, we're going to come back for part two because there's a lot to unpack here. And next week, we're going to give uh, statistics. We are going to give definitions. We are going to give examples. This episode, we kind of shared some of our story. Uh, just to let you know that you're not alone out there. There are a lot of people out there who are experiencing this. Um, you don't have to call them by name, but you can call them by feeling. And you just, just think about your relationships that you have with people and see how they are. And like Jay said earlier, it doesn't mean that you're perfect or you didn't have a part to play in whatever it is, but you're not responsible for another person's narcissism. And that's that gaslighting part that they will make you believe. So hopefully this helps shed some light on narcissistic behavior for you. And I hope you come back for part two of this conversation. Jay, you were good. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Kendall. My pleasure. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe where you can subscribe to this podcast. If you can rate this podcast wherever you listen, please rate it. Leave comments. I want to hear from you. Uh, Jay, how can people get in contact with you? Uh, actually, I can be reached on Instagram, Dr. J uh, at Ready Network. Dr. J dot Ready, that's R E D I dot Network. Um, that's where I am on, on Instagram. Um, TikTok as well, the same handle, Dr. J Ready Network. So look for me there. All Thank right. you for having me. You, my pleasure. All right, guy, rem guys, remember you are a star, so don't allow anyone to dim your shine. Until next time, God bless. Peace. Shine with Kendall Lenise. Real, real talk for real people. Let's shine together. Thanks for listening. This has been a Kenny Lynn production.